dear learners greetings from iit guwahati we are in the mooks course advanced thermodynamics and combustion till this point of time we have completed the entire modules and uh, in the last lectures i was discussing about the learning components of this course in fact you can see can consider this as a tutorial sessions where we are trying to learn some of the important uh, concepts about this course side by side we are also exploring to uh, many new exploring to many numerical problems sol and its solutions which can be considered as the question bank for the final exam now let me start we covered up to the module 4 where we talked about uh, mainly on advanced thermodynamics parts involving uh, basic concepts entropy and exergy thermodynamic property relations and gas mixtures today uh, we are going to summarize what we have discussed in the topic combustion so uh, for this course module 5th to module 8 uh, covers the concept of combustion while talking about the combustion the first thing that we do is that we try to find out the thermodynamic angle for towards this combustion analysis in fact a combustion process can be considered as a multi component systems as we explored in the module 4 uh, so in this multi component systems uh, which consist of uh, um, many number of gases uh, these gases can be in different gases this can be considered as a mixture but in similar philosophy we can say combustion is nothing but the mixture of fuel and oxidizer in the beginning now after the fuel ignites uh, the entire reactants and the oxidizers they vanishes and when they vanish we get the combustion products so in totality we can say it has the uh, uh, components which was initially in a mixing phase but and they vanishes and combustion products are formed uh so uh, by doing so one simplest approximation that can be made is that uh, if, if at all we want to get an estimates of the reaction temperatures or maximum temperature during this combustion then you have to bring the concept of thermodynamics so one such topic or one such parameters was uh, discussed about the adiabatic flame temperatures now while discussing about this combustions uh, and uh, combustion and thermodynamics link we find out the thermodynamics of reacting systems that involves the calculations of enthalpy entropy internal energy all these parameters and side by side we also try to uh, uh, expo explore the various uh, uh, combustion parameters related to thermodynamics now this is dealt in the module fifth where we talk about thermochemistry then moving further we discuss about the reaction uh, kinetics or chemical kinetics in fact combustion is nothing but a chemical reactions and during this uh, chemical reaction under stoichiometric uh, situations we see the we see the reactants Uh, and finally we see the, the products but while formation of this products there may be many kind of reactions that has participated and though some of the components has been formed and during this reaction process they also vanishes so uh, but if you look at the uh, exact replication of this combustion process we will find that there are some reactions which are treated as a global reactions some reactions that are treated as a individual reactions uh, and a reaction has to proceed in a particular directions in fact in the combustion process reaction is always a exothermic because heat comes out uh, so 
um, um, while um, maintaining the directionality of this reactions, we also see that whether uh, the system goes in the maximization of entropy or not. And a equilibrium situation is reached when the entropy reaches the maximum, entropy is maximum during this reaction phase. Then we also dealt with the uh, thermodynamics of reactive systems, uh, which means that a reactor is nothing but a combustion environment, which can be viewed as a open systems, where the reactants and uh, or fuel and oxidizer, they come as a two uh, um, inlets and the products that goes out is called as the combustion products. So, there are two inlet, one exit. So, if you view this as a reactor, then there are different models associated with. So, this module uh, 7 deals with the thermodynamics of reactive systems. And the last part talks about the combustion and flames, which in general uh, happens uh, in various applications. Some of the applications include uh, SI engines combustion, CI engine combustions, gas turbine combustions and the in order to find out the methodology of combustion process, we dealt with the fact that uh, about the uh, combustion and flames, where we discussed about uh, laminar flames and uh, ramular premixed flames, laminar diffusion flames. Then we dealt with droplet evaporations, droplet burning, all these concepts. Now, during this process also, we find out that um, the flame is another kind of a very small region in this combustion uh, uh, medium, which actually differentiates the uh, unburnt products and burned products. Means instantly when this combustion happens, we say that it is viewed as two distinct zones of burned products and um, unburned products. So, the flame difference trade between these two zones. So, uh, when the flame propagates in a combustion medium, it tries to burn out the reactants and side by side the concentration of products also goes off. Uh, so, this is about the premixed flame when it propagates in the combustion medium. There are also diffusion flames, there are also which means that we do not view this as a exactly as a flame, but the, if the ignition takes place at multiple locations in the combustion medium and each may be viewed as a, a, a discrete flames that propagate in the mediums and, and this is how the entire uh, combustion products are, are formed or the flame propagates into the entire medium. Apart from that, uh, there is a concept called droplet evaporation. Normally, uh, in many situations, fuels are introduced as a droplets and these droplets has certain lifetime. And when they enters into the combustion medium or domain, it sees a very high temperatures because the um, already there is a uh, pre high temperature is reached during the, uh, during the compression process. Now, when it sees the high temperature, it suddenly evaporates. That means, the droplets are formed at side by side, they evaporate and while evaporating, they burn as well. That means, when they burn, uh, nowhere they will be called as a fuel droplets, rather they burnt into combustion products. So, this is dealt with the um, droplet formation and burning. Uh, so, this uh, and to give more elaborate and to each each models. So, while talking about combustion and thermochemistry, we dealt with the combustion fundamentals, fuels, oxidizer, products of combustion, stoichiometry, lean and rich mixtures, equivalence ratio, enthalpy of formations, enthalpy of combustions, heating value. Why I am discussing all these things? Because these are the uh, uh, critical parameters that will be very beneficial and you know while refreshing this course, you must understand this parameter so that you can do well in the examination. We also dealt with the energy balance of combustion models. So, we dealt with the closed systems, open systems. Then we define the parameter called as adiabatic flame temperatures, 
and in fact this adiabatic flame temperature can be achieved through, through constant uh, pressure process or constant volume process. Now, while dealing with this combustion, we also define the chemical equilibrium and the equilibrium products of combustion. Now, normally stoichiometric is the um, ideal case where maximum heat is released during this uh, during the combustion process. But in reality, either the reaction process occurs in a lean regime or rich regime. So, for that when we have a lean combustion, uh, we can say that there is enough oxidizers. So, oxygen will be in the products, uh, but when we are going for a rich combustion, we will find that uh, the components like unburnt products like carbon monoxides are present. So, in those cases to kill these carbon components, we need to uh, uh, recirculate the gas. So, normally that way we can say effective energy utilization of flue gases. So, we recirculate this gas and that means the, the flue gases that comes out again is recirculated during the for the combustion. So, thereby we introduce the concept called as water shift reactions to find out what are the different equilibrium products of combustion. And while rich combustion, the other components of interest that are formed like NO, uh, NOx emissions, NO2 all these things are formed. So, effective way of uh, looking at uh, energy utilization of flue gas is the incorporating the exhaust gas recirculations or regeneration. Uh, while talking about the chemical kinetics, we dealt with the uh, fundamentals of chemical reactions where we defined global and elementary reactions, rate coefficients, equilibrium constants. Then we dealt with reaction mechanisms that involves unimolecular reactions, chain and branch reactions. In some situations, the chain and branch reactions prevails that means, we can have a multiple number of reactions or similar reactions. So, thereby it is very difficult to stop. Then some reactions uh, are unimolecular reactions. In some reactions also um, the uh, some of the products are formed and immediately they vanishes. Uh, while dealing with we gave some examples uh, of hydrogen oxygen reaction systems through its pressure temperature diagrams and where we discussed about the explosive explosion behavior of the hydrogen. Then during the combustion process we find out that what is the mechanism through which carbon monoxide oxidation takes place. Of course, similar mechanisms we also defined for which oxides of nitrogen are formed. So, such mechanisms are de detailed here for. Uh, so, when we have very high temperatures the Thormar or Zeldovich mechanism is, is more relevant and when we have lean mixtures the other um, reactions like Fenimore and Prond mechanism or N2O uh, intermediate mechanisms are important. Then in the module 7 that is thermodynamics of reactor systems we introduced the reactor modeling. The reactor modeling can be of fixed mass type or it can be a steady state uh, steady flow uh, perfectly mixed type. So, in a fixed mass, mass reactor type we can have a constant pressure or constant volume. In addition to that we have reaction modeling through um, plug flow reactors where axial uh, propagation of species is restricted. Then we dealt with uh, detailed conservation equations involving mass and species conservations, momentum and energy conservations. Then we introduced the concept of multi-component diff diffusions and conserved scalar. And in the last modules that is combustion and flames, I have mentioned that we, uh, uh, we have discussed in an elaborate manner about laminar pre-mixed flame, where we uh, talked about its physical um, features of the flame, uh, flame propagations, 
blame speed correlations, uh, the quantities like how to define the quenching, flammability limits, ignition, flashback, uh, blow up, flame lift up and flame stabilizations. Normally, when a laminar flame is, flame is considered, ideally it should be stabilized in such a way that flame should not propagate back to this main fuel source, otherwise it will create an explosion. To do this flame stabilizations, all this quenching and flammability limits has to be taken into account. Now, while talking about laminar diffusion flames, we say that the diffusion takes place that means, uh, the fuel diffuses in air. So, thereby we say that fuel uh, when the fuel comes out, it comes out a jet. So, that way we model this laminar diffusion flame through jet flame characteristics. Thereby we introduced parameters like how, what is the spreading rate, uh, what is the spreading angle, then there is a fa factor called as mixer fraction which is a mainly a very important uh, parameters which is nothing but a conjured scalar that says that during this uh, spreading or during this diffusion process the we have to find the trace of the uh, uh, the source of the trace of the carbon or the, the, the fuel particles, is there any trace of fuel particles in the at the end product of the combustion process or not. Then we moved on to other uh, important concepts like droplet evaporations uh, through mass and heat transfers. So, there we define d square law, droplet lifetime, droplet burning and towards the end we saw that how this the methodology of flames premixed and diffusion flames they are utilized in the engine combustions that is in spark ignition engines, compression ignition engines and gas turbine engines. And the last segment of this discussion was pollutant emissions and quantifications. So, this is another source where we say that um, we already said that, uh, that during this combustion process there is the reaction mechanisms that um, um, in which carbon monoxides are formed or soot particles are formed or we can have the um, um, NOx formations. So, to quantify these at the end products, what are the remedies that you are going to take? So, uh, to quantify them, we define some char characteristics parameters through which the pollutants emissions are quantified. One such uh, parameter is emission index of different pollutants. So, this is all about the overall uh, picture of this course. So, in the last uh, uh, tutorial sessions, we discussed about some numerical problems up to module 4. Now, in this uh, tutorial sessions, we will try to find out some of the question banks which are related in the areas of combustion. So, we are going to solve them one by one and you can treat them as a question bank for the final exam. So, the first problem is based on stoichiometry. So, the problem statement is that the combustion takes place between iso octane that is C 8 H 18 and air in an engine. The molecular weights of iso octane and air are given. We need to find out the air fuel ratio for a stoichiometric combustion and the air fuel ratio for 100 percent theoretical air means it is rich in air. So, rich in air means lean fuel and then we have to find the equivalence ratio. So, to solve such kind of problems, first thing you what you are going to write is the stoichiometric reaction. So, in this case we need to find out how this reaction should look like for iso octane and air. If I write iso octane and air reactions in stoichiometric case, so C 8 H 18 plus uh, 
O2 plus 3.76 N2 this will give rise to 8 CO2 plus 9 H2O plus 12.5 3.76 N2. So, these reactions we can uh, make based on our generalized reactions like C x H y based on the fact that we can treat this fuel as C x H y and correspondingly when it is added to air it gives C O 2 plus H 2 O with some stoichiometric coefficient and C plus D plus C. So, this uh, this was given as an example in our earlier discussions. So, by taking that concepts we write this stoichiometric reactions. So, for the timing the let us not uh, revisit those things. So, first we write this stoichiometric reactions of isooctane then while writing this then we can for this stoichiometric uh, reactions we can see that in both sides the atoms and uh, are balanced atoms I mean carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Then the first thing that is asked it is what is air fuel ratio. So, air fuel ratio can be calculated as A by F we can see if it is 1 mole it is 12.5 mole. So, we can say that is 12.5 moles of oxygen plus 12.5 moles into 3.76 of nitrogen that is the number of moles of requirement for, for air then for 1 mole of fuel. Then this is nothing but your if you simplify it this is 59.5 kilo mole air by kilo mole fuel. Now, this is air fuel these things in terms of kilo mole air per kilo mole fuel, but if you make them in terms of ratio then we have to bring into the molecular weight of into pictures. So, we can write this is 59.5 into uh, molecular weight of fuel that is 28 molecular weight of air that is 28 molecular weight of fuel that is 114. When you multiply we get air fuel ratio as 14.6. The second part of the solutions that we need to find the air fuel ratio for 110 percent of theoretical air. So, when you deal with the stoichiometric reactions then we have to bring this reactions with 110 percent of theoretical air. So, this this reaction now becomes C 8 H 18 and this 12.5 will be 1.1 times higher that is 12.5 into 1.1 then O 2 plus 3.76 N 2 this gives we do not know what is this. So, we have to find B C O 2 plus C H 2 O plus D N 2 plus E O 2. Why I am writing N 2 and O 2 because N 2 N 2 it will be there why I am writing O 2 because since it is a uh, uh, lean combustion. So, oxygen will be in the uh, products. Then you do the balancing of atoms. So, it says then we will find out B is equal to 8, C is equal to 9, D is equal to 51.7, E is equal to 1.25. Then this air fuel ratio now becomes air fuel 
ratio uh, in terms of mole kilo mole air and kilo mole fuel would be so it will be 12.5 into 1.1 times higher plus 12.5 into 1.1 into 3.76 divided by num num mole of fuel is 1. So, this will be 65.45 kilo mole air by kilo mole fuel. Then uh, A by F in terms of ratio will be 65.45 into 28 by 114. This number is 16. So, we have air fuel ratio for 100 percent theoretical air is 16, stoichiometric air is 14. So, equivalence ratio phi can be written as A by F stoichiometric divided by A by F actual. So, that is 14.6 divided by 16. So, this is 0 0.9. So, we get the answer for all the three cases. The next problem is uh, something like uh, uh, there are uh, it is a mixture of CO2 and nitrogen um, and they are compressed in a medium uh, from its initial state 1 bar 300 Kelvin to 3 bar to 3 bar pressure through a polytropic compression process of with, with index of compression as 1.25. So, we need to find out the apparent molecular weight of mixture, final temperature and compression work. So, this is a kind of a problem which is a mixture at the same time uh, this mixture uh, typically is not reacting and uh, but what we need to find out this apparent molecular weight. Uh, so, while dealing with our combustion cores, we, we try to uh, find out the correlation between molecular weight, uh, mole fractions and mass fractions. So, with that concept the problem needs to be solved. So, first thing what is given is that CO2 by mass it is 0 0.2 kg and its molecular weight as 44, then we have N2 by mass 0.3 kg, its molecular weight is 28. So, this will give you total mass as M as uh, 0 0.5 kg, but we do not know what is the total number of moles. To find the number of moles of CO2, so I write number of moles of CO2 as mass of CO2 divided by molecular weight of CO2. So, this is 0 0.2 divided by 44. So, this number is 0 0.2. 0.0045 kilo mole. Similarly, N N2 would be M mass of N2 divided by molecular weight of N2. So, this number is 0 0.3 by 28 that is 0 0.0107 kilo mole. We require apparent molecular weight. So, the first answer you can write that apparent molecular weight that is for mixture is nothing but mass of mixture divided by total number of moles. Okay. So, mass of mixture is given that is 0 0.5 number of moles of each case we found out. 0 0.0045 plus 0 
0 1 0 7. So, putting them we get this number is 32.9. Now, this mixture is compressed. Now, when it is compressed from this initial state to final states and the process is a polytropic compression. So, for polytropic compression we can write the expressions as T 2 by T 1 is equal to P 2 by P 1 to the power n minus 1 by n and here n is given as 1.25. Okay. Uh, what other parameters is given? P 1 as 1 bar, P 2 3 bar, T 1 310 Kelvin. So, putting these numbers we can arrive at this final temperatures T 2 as 3 by uh, 0 0.25 divided by 1.25 into T 1 310. So, this is 386 Kelvin. So, final temperature is known as uh, we got as 386 Kelvin. So, compression work. So, compression work W can be written as integral of P d V and this expression can be written as uh, M R T by 1 minus N. So, by assuming this mixture to be an ideal gas, but here R is not known. So, because it is a characteristics gas constant, so it has to be replaced with R bar by M molecular weight of mixture into T divided by 1 minus N. So, M is 0 0.5, R bar, R bar is given 8.314 divided by molecular weight that is 32.9 and T, T means here okay, this will be delta T temperature change that is T 2 minus T 1 that is final temperature is 386, initial temperature is 310 divided by 1 minus index of compression is 1.25. So, putting these numbers we can arrive at W as minus 38.5 kilo joule. This minus sign is, is there because it is a compression work and this minus sign arises because you have used 1 minus 1.25. The third problem is going to introduce with a concept of binary diffusion coefficients. So, in a multi component systems which is a mixture of hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogens. So, in this mixture uh, and each of them has their own uh, mole fractions and binary diffusion among them is also given. We need to find out the effective binary coefficients for the species in the mixtures. So, we can recall the uh, expression for effective binary diffusion coefficient in a mixture. How do you write them in terms of i j. So, i stands for any species, m stands for mixtures. So, d i m is nothing but uh, is equivalent to 1 minus concentration j of species i divided by summation of j is equal to 1 to n j i divided by d 
i j d i j means uh, in this in this case if you want to find out for i all this is concentration of i will be there and whatever j is there j is in this case if you say want to kind find the for oxygen uh, for, for hydrogen so the j would be for nitrogen and oxygen so if this is the general expressions so what we can write is d of h2 in the mixture would be 1 minus j of h2 divided by summation of uh, uh, sorry is not it will not be summation because it will be just addition of two more parameter that is j of o2 divided by d h2 o2 plus j n2 sorry it will be j j of n2 divided by d of h2 n2 ok. Uh, then we can find what is 1 minus j of h2 is 0 0.14 divided by j of O2 is 0 0.18 divided by d H2 O2 is 2.5 plus 0 0.63 and 2 divided by H2 N2 2.4. So, in one you once you simplify this number is 2.57 centimeter square per second. Similarly, we can write d O2 m. So, it will be 1 minus j of O2 divided by j of N2 divided by j uh, d O2 d O2 N2 plus j of h2 divided by d o2 h2 so this can be written as 1 minus 0 0.1818 1 for o2 divided by j of n2 that is 0 0.63 divided by d n2 o2 0 0.7 plus 0 0.14 divided by H2, H2O2 2.5. So, putting this number we can say it is 0 0.86 centimeter square per second. Last term D of N2 M that is 1 minus J of N2 divided by J of n2 divided by d n2 h2 plus j of o2 divided by sorry it is h2 o2 d n2 o2. So, this is 1 minus 0 0.63 divided by 0 0.14 divided by N2H2, N2H2 is 2.4 J of O2 plus 0 0.18 divided by 2.4. So, this number is 1.17 centimeter square per second. Okay. So, next problem is on uh, droplet evaporation or simply it follows this d square law. So, initially there is a spherical droplet whose diameter is 0 0.1 mm and it evaporates for which the evaporation constant is given. So, by d square law we find out 
droplet lifetime is defined as T d is equal to d 0 square by k, where k is evaporation constant that is 5.8 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter square per second and d is given. So, simply by putting this number we can say 1.1. So, 0 0.1 into 10 to the power minus 3 square divided by 5.8 into 10 to the power minus 7. So, after simplifying we say T d is 0 0.01724 seconds or it is approximately 17.24 milliseconds. We say is that during a droplet evaporation process, the lifetime of the droplets is hardly about uh, 17 milliseconds or close to um, 20 milliseconds. So, this next problem is about premixed laminar flame. So, the statement says that a uh, laminar flame, premixed laminar flame is stabilized in a one dimensional glass flow its uh, the vertical velocity vu of the unburnt mixture varies linearly with distance so as per the following data so data that is given that uh, unburnt velocity that is x is equal to 0 unburnt velocity vertical velocity is 0 0.5 meter per second and at x is equal to 0 0.02 meter this V u is 0 0.9 meter per seconds. So, this is linear that is given. Then we can find out the equation of uh, for this vertical uh, velocity component V u is equal to V u at is at x is equal to 0 plus V u at x is equal to 0 0.02 plus v minus of course, minus v u at x is equal to 0 divided by distance that is 0 0.02 into x. So, this is the equation of uh, uh, equation of motion for v u. So, you can find out v u by putting this number as 0 0.5 plus 0 0.9 minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.02 into x. So, this is 0 0.5 plus 20 x. So, V u is equal to 0 0.5 plus 20 x. That means, but, uh, vertical velocity of unburned mixture varies linearly with x with these equations and what we need to find out local angle that, that flame sheet makes. So, we can recall that uh, laminar flame speed S L is defined in terms of V u as V u sin alpha. So, from this we require this local angle alpha is nothing but that local angle. So, that means sin alpha is equal to S L by V u and S L is given 0 0.4 meter per second. So, this is 0 0.04 And what is V u, but uh, we need to find out at x is equal to 0 0.1. So, at x is equal to 0 0.01 meter, we can use this equations V u we can find out as 0 0.5 plus 20 into 0 0.01. So, this 
So, this means V u 0 0.7 meter per second. So, putting this we can say sin alpha as uh, okay, alpha as sin inverse 0.4 by 0.7. or alpha is approximately 34.85 degree. So, the local angle that makes flame sheet with the vertical flame is 34.85 degree. The next problem is on a laminar speed correlation for a experimentally verified data or, or it is you can say the experimental correlation of laminar flame speed is related to pressure and temperature of the medium and with respect to that of reference pressure and temperatures. So, we have this conditions of pressure and temperature is given. So, P is given as 15 atmosphere T is given as 585 Kelvin, then it is very easy that uh, uh, we need to find out what is this uh, at this pressure and temperature conditions, what is this laminar flame speed. We can simply insert this value that is 20 into 585 and reference condition is 1 atmosphere and 298 Kelvin. So, T reference would be 298 to the power 2.2 and P is 15 by 1 to the power minus 0 0.2. So, after simplifying we need to find the laminar flame speed through an experimental observations of that condition pressure and temperature as 0. 5 meter per second. Okay. And the last problem that we are looking at the problem with uh, with uh, uh, with respect to quantification of pollutants. which says in an engine test which is engine is running with iso octane as a fuel. This fuel when it releases the combustion products it releases CO2 as 12.5 percent, CO as 0 0.1 percent, O2 as 2 percent, NO as 76 ppm and soot particles, soot particles or carbon particles normally represented in hexane equivalent. So, in this hexane equivalent means uh, we can say uh, that number of carbon particles is 6. So, that is given as 250 ppm and all of them are volume dry volume basis. Now, we need to find out emission index of unburnt hydrocarbons express equivalent to hexane. So, basically this, uh, this is another way of quantifications for unburnt hydrocarbons. So, by definition if you want to find out this emission index we write its definition emission index of we can say carb, uh, unburnt hydrocarbons equivalent to hexane. So, I will write C 6 H 14 is equal to concentration of C 6 H 14 divided by concentration of C O plus concentration of C O 2 into x, x is number of carbon. So, x in this case is 8 number of carbons and molecular weight of hexane that is C 6 H 14. 
divided by molecular weight of fuel that is C 8 H 18. So, this is by definitions. Now, all the numbers are given. So, let us see what is the data given. So, molecular weight of C 6 H 14 each that is 6 into 12 plus 1 into 14 that is 86. Then molecular weight of molecular weight of fuel that is C 8 H 18 that is 8 into 12 plus 18 into 1. So, this number is 114 kg per kilo mole. and x is given as 8. Now, let us talk about what is xi CO 2 concentration of CO as 0 0.1 percent that is 0 0.001 xi CO 2 is 12.5 percent that is 0 0.125. So, considering this when you put this number emission index for uh, unburnt hydrocarbons equivalent to hexane each then C 6 concentration of C 6 H 14 is 250 ppm that into 10 to the power minus 6 parts per million. So, we write this 250 into 10 to the power minus 6 divided by 0 0.001 plus 0 0.125 entire multiplication as x is 8 into 86 molecular weight of hexen divided by 114 molecular weight of fuel. So, after simplifying it we write E i C 6 H 14 as 0 0.01197 kg by kg of fuel and a better approach for this quantification is writing in terms of grams. So, it will be about 12 grams of uh, C 6 H 8 H 14 per kg of fuel. We, which means that emission index is 12 grams of unburnt hydrocarbons equivalent to XL with respect to uh, uh, unit kg or kg of fuel that is C 8 H 18 isooctane. So, with this I conclude this syllabus and I conclude this tutorial sessions. I hope you have you all have enjoyed this course. Uh, subsequently down the line we will have another live session class where learners are requested to frame their questionnaires which can be clarified and towards the end of this course we will have final exams and the learners are requested for uh, to do all kinds of problems that has been derived during the lecture sessions as well as the tutorial sessions. And you can take them as a benchmark of question banks which will be definitely useful for the final exams. Thank you and best wishes for your future. With this 
let us close this course thank you for your attention Thank you.